Cool. Hi, everyone. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm James. Um, I come here, I work at Deutsche Bank as a director in technology there. Um, but my background's really in developing different kinds of algo trading systems um, over the years, pricing systems, HFT, market making systems, things like that. Um, and typically, they've all been event based systems, uh, they've all been distributed. They've all been had some aspect of like low latency performance around them, and uh, they've also been all linked to quants or traders in some way. So working with quants, um, and traditionally, I've been doing that in C plus plus, um, a bit of Java and .NET over the years, but mainly C plus plus. And then um, last year, I was doing some consulting, and I got the opportunity for a small hedge fund um, to do a greenfield project in Rust. Um, so those are two things you don't turn down. You don't turn down Greenfield. You don't turn down Rust. Um, so um, I spent six months building a algo execution system in Rust for them. Um, and uh, yeah, well, we'll see what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, so this is the GUI. Um, you have to trust me. There is a whole system behind this. <laughs> yeah, it's not just a screenshot. Um, so. Yeah, basically, it works. Um, and, you know, that, that's the main lesson for me using Rust in a production environment. <laughs> um, that's the main lesson for me using Rust because, you know, we, I wasn't 100% sure that everything would fit into place um, in terms of doing from, what, from going from what I've done before, which was doing Rust on kind of a hobby side to actually a production environment. Um, it, it did work. Um, it's handed over to someone else to develop further, and it's now live, and it's trading, um, and it's safe, and it's fast. Um, so those tend to be the two main concerns on the algo side. Is it safe? Does it fast? And yes, that, that fits. So um, just briefly, like, what's behind this? This is a GUI actually written in the eGUI framework, if anyone's used that. Um, just to summarize my experience with eGUI, like, very briefly, is like, for this kind of size project, by a small project, by a production project, it worked fine. Would I want to scale up to a huge production GUI serving hundreds of people? Probably not. Um, maybe it'll change every time, but that's my personal view on it. Um, behind this, there is um, basically a, a, a distributed um, event-based system using the active pattern, as we just similar to what we just saw, um, and. Uh, Along with um, the GUI, there's also like a, a front-end API, uh, gRPC API, that quants can, and traders can connect to to place orders. So the two main interfaces, the GUI interface, where we could place and manage orders, and an API interface as well. Um, yeah, so that's the summary of the system. Um, and just focus a little bit on like, how we use Rust and Python together, because this is a Rust and Python day, isn't it? Um, one way we use Python and Rust together is as Python is a client of the Rust service. Um, so we run basically our real-time fast Rust stuff over here, and we have a gRPC interface. We just connect to it from a Python client. The trader can use that Python client to create their, um, to create their rules, to create their strategy, high-level strategy, and then that operates on a, a, a fast real-time basis and over here. Um, now, for this kind of use case where we've got like an algo execution use case for a hedge fund, that works really well because generally the execution bit needs to be pretty fast um, and doesn't change so much. Uh, maybe there's like low level uh, algo execution logic like you know, kind of TWAP or something a bit more sophisticated than that. But the low frequency strategies, which are the high level decision making that evolves slowly over time, well, traders and quants want to be able to change that quite a lot. Um, so they've got the agility in Python, and then you've got the speed really on the Rust side. And here's an example of some code that just uses the gRPC interface on the, on the Python client to connect to the server, place an order. Um, the key thing there is it's pretty simple. Um, and what's really nice about Rust is that we get things like gRPC server out of the box without a lot of faffing around with build tools and, and CMake and stuff. So um, you know, I've plugged in uh, gRPC into Cargo, so I've got my gRPC server. It's pretty much the same on the Python client side. Import gRPC and they connect and talk together. Um, so that was a nice, pleasant experience. Um, and obviously using Protobuf for serialization. Um, and then there's a slightly different way we use uh, Python as well. Because um, I, I did say that the, like, the those order low-level um, execution logic doesn't change that much. 
but it can still change. Um, and this is a loop that over the years in different projects, I've tended to use quite a lot, where there's a quant dev writing some algo logic. It might be a, some kind of strategy. It might be some like execution strategy. It might be a HFT strategy, some pricing logic. Um, and we've got that piece of logic that we want to run in production, and we want it to be fast, and we want it to be safe. But we also want maybe the quant to be able to do verification or calibration on the same piece of logic. And we want to make sure that the logic we're running in production is the same logic that is being calibrated or backtested. Um, so this works, I found, really well in Rust, because if we write the algorithm logic in Rust, we can then expose that as a we can then expose that as a shared object, as a SO or DLL, import that into a Python environment. And then in the research environment, we can call into the same algo logic that we're using at runtime. So we've got like a, a, a loop, we've got our loop. And I've previously, um, I've done that with uh, C++. That kind of works. Um, but the quant or dev has to write C++ code. And your mileage varies on that, because for a little bit of code, maybe that's fine. But as it gets more complicated, then we start worrying about things like memory safety um, and undefined behavior, which is a real killer, because even if we test it, it looks fine. Maybe one day, actually, the parameters change, and suddenly it's all broken. Um, or worse, it's sending out the wrong orders. Um, so we could have used C++ for something like this. It's also C++. You can uh, create uh, shared objects in the port and use that from Python. But it's not as nice as the PIO3, PIO3 or 0 C. Yeah, uh, O3 interface that you get with Rust. Um, and also, uh, there's a few other languages we could use there, like um, I've done the same before with C and MATLAB. Not many people use MATLAB anymore. Uh, but you can write MATLAB code and do code generation and stuff like that. It's all a bit harder. Um, and things like uh, other languages that may be on a par with Rust on a, like a real-time perspective, like um, uh, .NET or Java, perhaps, they don't work quite so well in a real-time context because they've got things like garbage collection going on and memory is more difficult to manage. And exposing them back to Python is pretty much a non-starter, um, calling it a, a jar file. Um, so, uh, yeah, what I found from my experience on a production project, even though quite a small one, is that Rust quite works quite well. There are production Rust systems out there, they're not all crypto. Um, and I would, from my perspective, you know, this kind of project, um, every project um, does different parameters, but it worked quite well on an event based system. Um, obviously, you get the memory safety, um, not just memory leaks with, and buffer overflows, which people tend to initially think about, but things like uh, iterator invalidation and stuff like that, where if you have quantum writing code, that can slip in. Um, but also you get productivity. So this whole platform was built in six months uh, with me and one other person, um, including the GUI and, and the documentation and other things on the side, like alerting and that kind of stuff. Um, the performance is pretty good. Certainly from what I've seen so far, I could build the same performance as a C++ HFT application in Rust if I wanted to, <laughs> but I haven't got around to it yet. Um, it has all the same capabilities. You know, it has that low-level low, low um, management, uh, memory management, um, and it can interface with C APIs. So really, there's nothing really stopping you doing the same stuff. Um, and it's compatible with C and Python, obviously, on the Python side. And on the C side, that's really useful because there's a lot of C APIs out there. Um, certainly, like in a, in a low latency space, we use things like user space um, network drivers. Um, they have a C API. So if you want to talk to them, that's what you have to use. Um, also, the fact that it links against C um, and it's compatible not with just a C API, but also with the ABI, um, that helps from performance perspective, obviously. Um, things I kind of learned alongside, um, obviously, the GUI and web frameworks aren't as mature as they might be in other languages. I think everyone's aware of that. Third-party libraries obviously hard to find. Luckily, in this project, we didn't really need any third-party libraries, like for, for kind of business logic and that kind of stuff, um, or interactions like Bloomberg. Um, supply chain security uh, is a big thing in my current role because now I'm trying to look at bringing Rust into a large organization. 
they want to know that, okay, it might be really easy to just add a line to cargo, but what does that do from a security perspective? And coming from a C++ side, that was never really a big issue. But, you know, it's much more of an experience of JavaScript and Python developers bringing in third-party libraries so easily. Um, so supply chain security seems to be a bit of a gap at the moment on the enterprise side. And then obviously finding uh, Rust developers. I'm sure there's probably some people in the room that can help out with that. Uh, but um, yeah, that's obviously a concern, you know, in terms of building teams. 